Hi, welcome to Bookshelf Games. I'm Lawrence. Uh, this week, we're still continuing Magic Realm. Magic Realm, again, came out in 1978, designed by Richard Hamblin, uh, published by Avalon Hill. Uh, this week, we're going over the odds and endings section of Joel Yoder's uh, Magic Realm in plain English. Um, just like the name implies, this part ties up some loose ends that weren't in the rest of the chapters, and also goes over final scoring of the game. So, we'll go ahead and get into it now. Number one, public and secret information. In general, anything blank side up that is face down in Magic Realm is secret. For example, a player can only look at map chits or treasures on the setup card if the rules specifically tell him to do so. When a player is allowed to look at a face-down piece of information, he is not allowed to show other players. He looks at himself, then he must put them back face-down in the same order they were without rearranging the items. Any piece that is double-sided or face-up is considered public information. A player can count how many treasure cards are left at a site. A player may look at both sides of the horse counters and may look at both sides of native counters. When looking though, a character is not allowed to rearrange the order of the stack. The following information about the character is public. All the information on the character card, all of the character's belongings except any inactive treasures the character may have. The inactive treasures may be revealed by the character or kept secret if he wishes. Inactive treasure cards remain face down even when they are sold to another character or abandoned. The disposition of a character's chits, what chits are active, what chits may be fatigued, and what chits have been wounded. The character's recorded fame and notoriety are also public. Whether a character has found hidden enemies is considered public, and also the character's current trade relationships. The rest of the information on a character sheet is secret, including each recorded activity until just before he does the activity, each discovery until he uses or sells it, his recorded gold until the end of the game, and his recorded victory conditions until the end of the game. When a player is directed by the rules to keep a piece of information secret, he can tell it to other players, but he is not allowed to show any proof. For example, a player can tell other players what his victory conditions are, or tell them what treasure cards a native group has just after trading with them, but he is not allowed to show them what he actually recorded or reveal the actual treasure cards while the game is still going on. A player is also free to lie about any secret information. 2. Selling information. When they trade, characters can sell certain information to each other. A character can sell a discovery that he has made to another character who may then cross it off his own discovery list. They must be in the clearing with the discovery to do so. If the discovery is a sight chit that is face down at the moment, the player must turn the chit up to prove its existence. Then the chit is placed face down again. A character can sell other secret information, including his own future plans, but he is not allowed to verify it. For example, he could tell another character what chits are in another tile, but 
He cannot turn them to prove it. A character may not sell a find hidden enemies result to another character. 3. Spying. Characters are always considered to be spying on all unhidden characters in their clearing. Those who have found hidden enemies are spying on any hidden enemy characters as well. When a character uses a discovery, everyone who is spying on him discovers it too. If he moves on a secret roadway, all spies in the clearing that he left from or arrives to discover the roadway as well. If a character loots a treasure site, all spies in the clearing discover the site. If one character sells a discovery to another character, any characters in that clearing that are spying receive the discovery as well. If the character is hidden when he sells, the discovery is only found by the person buying it and anyone who has successfully found hidden enemies. Spying on the buyer does nothing. Curses, wishes, and power of the pit. When a character rolls on the curses table, he gets a curse that limits what he can do in the game until the curse is removed. If the character gets the same curse twice, then the second curse has no effect. The wish and the power of the pit tables inflict a one-time effect. Fresh starts. Sadly, some characters may not survive the rigors of the Magic Realm. If a player wishes to restart after losing his character, he may pick any character who is not in use, including the character that was just killed, and re-enter the game at the start of the next game day. The new character is considered to be a completely different individual from the one that was just killed. The player takes a fresh personal history sheet, records new victory requirements, and proceeds as if it was the start of a new game. He must start at the inn. A character will get their starting items first by checking if they're available from the native groups, and if he's not able to find them there, he takes them from the abandoned items on the map. If the items are not with the native groups or on the map, he must do without them. But he receives that item's price in gold. If two players lose characters on the same day, the player who lost character first gets to select his new character first. If the characters that were killed were killed simultaneously, each of the player rolls one die and the person who rolls highest gets to select first. New players can also join the game following these same rules. Quitting the game. The players can agree to end the game at any time. They can play to a set hour, for example. If they all quit together, the game ends as if it were the end of the month. If any players refuse to quit, the game continues. Individual players can quit the game in two ways. A. Suiciding. A player can kill himself at midnight of any game day. When he suicides, his belongings are abandoned in the clearing he was on. The other way an individual character can quit the game is leaving the map. During birdsong, characters record a movement off the map and then during daylight he may actually move his character off the map. This kills his character. Any belongings owned by that character are removed from play for the rest of the game. His score is then calculated immediately. When a player quits, he must stay out of the game for at least one complete game day. 
After sitting out for the day, he may rejoin the game using the fresh start rules that we just went over. Winning the game. Success in Magic Realm is measured in four categories. Great treasures, fame points, notoriety points, and gold. There's also the usable spells, but I'm going to wait until we get into the magic video to go over that one. Before the start of play, each character selected the values required to win in the victory requirements box. I'm going to go ahead and fill it in real quick using a common one I often use, which is three points in fame, two points in notoriety. That will give us times 10 for the fame, needed 30 points in fame, and times 20 for notoriety, 40 points in notoriety. At the end of the game, the players will calculate their final scores and determine the winner. When the game ends, each character must discard all items that he owns that he cannot carry. Essentially, the character is making a final move off the board. The character may play a move chit or horse if they have one, just as during normal movement. Any items that are too heavy, in this case the gold crown is heavy, but the woods girl only has light moves, must be abandoned in the clearing where the character is making the final move. Then he uses his remaining belongings and his recorded values to calculate the score in each category as follows. For this part, I'm going to use a spreadsheet that was created by David Brown. Uh, he really put together a nice spreadsheet that walks through how to calculate the score. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Great Treasures. A character's Great Treasure score is the number of treasure cards the character has when the game ends with a red dot on them. And that gets written in the game points. The character's fame score is going to be the final amount of fame they had on the last day of the game plus any modifiers caused by items they own. In this case, minus 15. So the 30 minus 15 will give us 15. Notoriety is going to be similar. You're going to take the final notoriety recorded and then add or subtract any of the modifiers from items the character owns. In this case, plus 15. So plus 15 plus 80 gives a final notoriety of 95. Gold is also very similar. The character will take the final recorded gold Subtract the 10 gold that they got to start the game with, and also subtract the monetary value of any weapons or armor the character got to begin the game with. The Woods Girl started the game with a light bow, which costs 6. So the minus 6 plus the minus 10 for the starting gold, subtracted from the 40, gives us 24, which again is written right there. Each player then goes through each column and figures out their score in each of the different areas. We're going to take a look at the fame and notoriety because it can be a little bit different if you end up with a positive score or if you end up with one and a negative score. So first we'll look at the negative with the fame. Beginning of the game, the character recorded how many victory points they want to have in fame. In this case, three. Fame has a multiplier of ten. That means our victory points needed is going to be thirty because it's the multiplier times the victory points assigned, 30. Next, the player figures out how many points they actually have, and this is the game points they accumulated minus the game points needed. So 15 minus 30 equals negative 15. After that, you get a penalty if you're in the negatives. So since this is a negative 15, you're going to get that penalty, which is times 3. So you're actually going to end up with negative 45. After that, we figure out our basic score. This is going to be our adjusted points, the points after the penalty if it was applied, divided by the needed multiplier, in this case 10. So 45 divided by 10 
is going to give us 4.5. This total is rounded down, so that gives us a negative 4. After that, you're going to figure out your bonus score. And the purpose of this is really to make those victory points that you signed at the beginning of the game count towards a lot. Because if you signed a lot of victory points, you're going to get a lot of points here, or you stand to lose a lot of points if you had a negative number. So our bonus score is going to be our basic score, in this case we're still looking at negative 4, times the number of victory points we assigned. And in this case with fame, we had used 3. So the negative 4 times 3 is giving us a negative 12. After that, we do our subtotal, which is simply our basic score plus our bonus score, giving us a negative 16. Okay, so the fame ended up in the negatives, which isn't too good. But the notoriety should turn out better. For the notoriety, we have a recorded victory points of two victory points. The multiplier for notoriety is 20. That's going to give us a points needed of 40. During the game, I have recorded down and said we got accumulated 95 points. So, the points equal the game points, 95, minus points needed, which is 40, which would give us 55 points. Then you figure out the adjusted points, if they were negative. Since this was not negative, you don't really need to do that. But for the sake of how this spreadsheet is laid out, we'll just move over the 55 points and note that they are positive. Next, we look at the basic score, which is going to be the adjusted points, they were not adjusted because they're positive, 55, divided by the multiplier, which again, for notoriety, the multiplier is 20. So that's actually only going to give us a basic score of 2. Because 55 divided by 40 equals 2.75 or something, but that gets rounded down, so leaving us with victory points of 2. We then calculate the bonus score. The bonus score is going to be that basic score 2 times victory points. Victory points again assigned was 2. So the 2 times 2 gives us the 4. After that, we want to look at our subtotal for that category. This again is our basic score plus our bonus score. That gives us plus 6. After we have the subtotals for all the different categories, uh, for this example I'm just going to say that these were 0, there is actually a way to get or lose points even though you assigned zero victory points to a category, but we won't really look at that because that's usually only one point and it's uh, kind of rare. But anyway, after we get the subtotals for each category, you're going to add them all together. So negative 16 plus 6 is going to give us a grand total of negative 10. So as you can see, those negative points can really crush you, and that's mostly because of the adjusted uh, bonus. <clears throat> so during the game, you're really going to want to try and meet those victory requirements. But in actuality, a negative 10 is really not a bad score for Magic Realm. Magic Realm is a really difficult game, and just receiving a score of 0 or 1 is considered having a winning strategy. And after each par character has figured out their grand total, they're going to compare grand totals, and the person with the highest number wins. A quick note also, if any character had died during the course of the game and did not start with a new character, their final score is going to be minus 100. If they did die and chose another character and began the game again, they're going to score for that character with no consideration of the character that died. Okay, so that's it. That's the odds and endings. Um, pretty simple. A lot of basic stuff you need to go over. Um, the scoring can be a little complicated, but it makes sense once you really take a look at it. Uh, in case you're wondering, this here is Ian. He's our newest playtester at Bookshelf Games. Uh, so far, he's only really good at screaming and vomiting, but that's a pretty common strategy amongst the people who play games over here. Um, also, the reason I'm bringing Ian on is because his bedroom had been turned into the Magic Realm studio. 
So unfortunately, we're going to have to take a little break from these Magic Realm videos until um, he gets a little bigger and I can steal his room back. But we'll be continuing with some other videos. Um, I'm actually going to try a different format, a little bit better for casual viewers. And we should be getting started on that uh, next week. So look forward to that. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.